Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. I am your instructor, Paul DC, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Well, at the time of this taping of the lesson, which is May of 2021, we are over 1,650 subscribers. I want to take this time to thank each and every one of you who have subscribed. I really do appreciate this. I want to keep this the biggest free gem classes on YouTube. And with your help, I think we can get there. Now, if you have not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a penny. It's completely free, but it allows me to continue to do these lessons for you. Well, this week's lesson is episode 63, and it's about Jade. I actually kind of can't believe it it's taken me this long to get to episode 63, because Jade is literally not just a very important gem, it's a gem that's sort of in a class all by itself. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. First of all, jade has been appreciated and used in many, many cultures around the globe for over 3,000 years. But it wasn't until about maybe 150, 158 years ago, something like that, I think it was 1863, that they recognized, recognized there were two completely different varieties of jade. There is jadeite jade and there is nephrite jade. What does that mean? Hmm. Okay, so we have jadeite jade and nephrite jade. Well, what's the difference and what's the big deal? Well, each of those varieties has a slightly different hardness, a slightly different chemical composition. Everything else about them are essentially the same. Um, but they share one very important trait, and it's why they're, they're all jade. Um, they share tenacity. Now, what does tenacity mean? Remember when I talk about the Mohs scale of hardness and I talk about the toughness scale? That toughness scale is called tenacity. And what it is is the ability to withstand breaking and chipping as opposed to scratching. So that toughness scale Nephrite jade and jadeite jade are the only gems that are rated exceptional, like not poor, not good, not excellent. They're the only two that are rated exceptional on that toughness or tenacity scale. So this is because of the way that they grow. They're, they have these interlocking grains of crystals that make them structurally stronger than, and tougher than a lot of gems. So while that tenacity that it has makes it a little bit more difficult to mine it or to work with it, especially if you want to carve it, it also means it's going to be much more easily worn every single day without feeling like it's going to be vulnerable to breaking. And that's really important. Okay, so we're going to get to that sort of... Uh, vital statistics boring part of the lesson, but I'll make it very quick. First of all, it is not a traditional birthstone. So no birthstone list that I've ever seen has jade as part of the list. However, it is recognized on many as the 12th anniversary stone. So if you're celebrating your 12th anniversary, jade would be a very appropriate gift to give. Now I said that they have two slightly different chemical compositions. Now I'm going to show you, actually I'll show you a live shot. This is the jadeite jade. This is a, an old uh, piece that's uh, not only Judy's, but it came from her mother. And it's the natural green jadeite jade. Uh, I also have an example of the bracelet. Again, completely natural color, sort of matches my shirt. That was not an accident. But the comp chemical composition of the jadeite jade is a sodium aluminum silicate. Now we get into the Nephrite jade, which I don't have a sample here for, me, for you, but you can look on your screen. It has a slightly darker kind of green, darker green color and a little bit more of a greasy appearance to the stone. But the, uh, that has a different chemical composition. They're both a, an alum, a, a silicate and they both have aluminum, but the nephrite has calcium magnesium aluminum and the uh, jadeite is sodium aluminum silicate. So calcium, magnesium, aluminum, silicate, or sodium, aluminum, silicate. That's the difference between their chemical compositions. Uh, crystal structure, same for both of them. Monoclinic, they're both jade. 
Uh, the hardness, they're a little bit different. The hardness of the jadeite jade is slightly harder. It's seven out of a 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness, very similar to what you would find in quartz. Whereas the nephrite jade is six to six and a half. That puts it more on par with something like a turquoise. So not the same hardness. That means it's going to scratch more easily than the jadeite jade would. Uh, toughness, I mentioned, they're both exceptional in the toughness. So that's going to be no difference there. Refractive index, also virtually the same, 1.66 to 1.67 or 1.66 1.68. It's not known as a stone for its sparkle. Uh, specific gravity, about 3.33 versus 2.98. So the jadeite slightly denser than what you would find in the nephrite jade. Okay, so where does this jade come from, or perhaps more importantly, where did the name jade come from? Um, and it's, it, it, it's really interesting. I call it a gem in a class all by itself. You know, we here in the, in the Western culture, we talk about precious gemstones being the, the ruby, sapphires, emeralds, and diamonds. Uh, but in the Asian culture, especially in China, they consider jade to be the ultimate and the most precious of all gemstones. In fact, rumor has it, uh, folklore has it, that in the you know, centuries ago, entire kingdoms in China were traded for a single piece of imperial jade. And we'll talk about what imperial jade is a little bit later in the lesson. But let's first start with where did the name jade come from? Okay, when uh, Cortez, and his conquistadors were in Central America, they noticed some of the indigenous people would be holding a green stone against their sides. And they were watching this for a while and the indigenous people thought that it would help with pain in their hips or in their kidneys. Uh, so the conquistadors started to have a name for this. And they said that it was, they began to refer to it as that the Piedra de Hijada, Hijada, so the H is silent. So I'll put the spelling up on the, so Piedra de Hijada, and that meant the stone of the loins. Later on, the French shortened that to Le Jade, which I think is all you have to do when you want to speak French is just put Le in front of it, but they call it Le Jade or Le, le Jade, and that is much closer to the the term that we use today. Um, so that's why we, it got the name. Now the, the colors of jadeite, you know, I'm going to, this might be a disaster, but I'm going to pick up this um, piece that I showed you, which is a pendant, but it's translucent to opaque is really what jade is. Now I'm going to put the, this is what it looks like up close and personal. You could probably still see that you can, that light will pass through it, but I'm going to show that to you with this, you can see that you're seeing that light behind that. That means it's translucent. So it is a highly translucent to sometimes opaque, but if you get into the imperial, well, let me show you one on your screen. Imperial jade would be an almost emerald green color and almost transparent stone. It's highly translucent, but you can almost really see right through it. And that would be the imperial jade, which is very, very, very rare and very, very, very expensive. So it can range from green to black, brown, lavender, blue, orange, pink, red. All of these colors are possible in jade, although much, much more rare. It's more commonly found in green. These days, full disclosure, and even times when I was selling jade on either HSN or QVC, um, a lot of the lavender jades and the yellow jades and even the red jades are dyed today. And that's not a problem. It's okay as long as whoever is selling you that stone is to disclosing that it achieved that color by having been dyed. Also, in my experience, most of the jadeite jade that you see in the green color, and it's a little bit lighter in color, um, is natural. So this is a completely natural, non-dyed green jade that came probably from Burma or China. So that's 
kind of the the crux of the jadeite jade but before we move on to the nephrite jade let me tell you where it comes from so the the most important sources uh, of the jadeite guatemala japan Myanmar, which of course was formerly called Burma. We've all heard of Burmese jade. We've heard of Chinese jade. Russia, Tibet, speaking of China, and certain jade like in Wyoming is found in the United States of America. But now I wonder, and I'm curious, what we're gonna find out about the nephrite jade. And every time I think about jade, um, it's so rich in history and culture when you think about Chinese jade and how important it is to their culture and a lot of times when I was doing some of those shows even on QVC those jade shows they were really really popular shows but it was amazing how certain pieces were given to babies when they were born or maybe it was even a bracelet and then when they got big enough they would you know have to cut the bracelet off uh, and that was supposed to dispel all the evil spirits there were a lot of fascinating stories that go along with jade. It's, I think it's just such an important, important gemstone uh, and one that everybody should add to their repertoire. But now on to the nephrite jade. Now remember, nephrite jade, jadeite jade, they're both jade. I mentioned earlier, it's gonna have a little darker green color, maybe a little bit more greasy appearance. It also can be translucent to opaque. It can also come in a wide variety of colors, the black, the brown, the white, the yellow, the gray but what makes it different than the jadeite jade i told you that most of your green jade jadeite jade is not dyed and of course if anybody does dye their green jade they need to tell you that but most of it is not dyed nephrite jade all of those other colors are most likely dyed and even i would say a, a lion's share of some of the uh, nephrite jade is dyed even if it's a green color it might be a light color and then they'll make it a little bit deeper now the color of that green nephrite jade as i mentioned is going to be a little bit darker than what you're finding in the jadeite jade uh, anyway but a lot of it is dyed now it has that darker appearance a little bit more greasy and you'll get to the point where you can really pick them out pretty easily and i'll show you more examples of that the name jade still comes from the same story I talked about the conquistadors in Central America and the stone of the loins, which what happened was later that stone of the loins became nicknamed the kidney stone. So the kidney stone. Well, when they determined in 1863 that there were two different distinct types of jade, they needed to come up with a, a name to distinguish that. And that's why they called the first one jadeite jade. And then how did they come up with the nephrite jade? How did they come up with that name? Well, basically, the Latin translation for kidney stone is lapis, which is stone, lapis nephriticus, which is for kidney. So lapis nephriticus, and they just, uh, shortened that to nephrite to describe that other variety of jade that is out there. Now, a couple of different sources for jade, uh, nephrite jade, than the jadeite jade, although they can be found in similar areas as well. Uh, Australia is one source. Canada, actually, there was a, a tremendous, um, I would forget which, it's probably the Tucson Gem Show. And I saw some completely natural green jade that came from Canada, and it was a nephrite jade that was green, but they didn't dye it. It was completely natural. And um, I'd like to get some of that back on because I'd love this, to uh, sell that again. It's a beautiful material. China, Mexico, New Zealand, Russia, Taiwan, and the United States of America. I really do think this was an important lesson, but I think that for a lot of you, um, that you should add it to your your collection if no other reason because because of the beauty and the history behind the stone but again it is one of the most tenacious stones if you're somebody that's not careful with gemstones i would say maybe you want to avoid a tanzanite maybe you want to avoid a kunzite you can wear your jade all the time it is again the only gem not as hard i mean seven six six to six and a half with an f right Jadeite, 
seven on the, on the most scale of hardness, but exceptional, meaning almost impossible to break or chip. It's why they can carve these things even in thin pieces and not worry about them breaking. So if you want something that you can wear every day without worrying about it, you can't do any better than you would with jade, whether it's nephrite jade or the jadeite jade. Well, I hope that you enjoy this lesson on jade, episode 63. Remember, if you've not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I really would appreciate that. I want to keep this free for you guys always. So when you subscribe, it allows me to monetize in different ways without charging you a penny. We'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching the Color Gemstone Academy. Bye-bye.